Welcome to Hope Lutheran Church in Temecula, California. I'm Pastor Sandy Benson. On behalf of our whole congregation, we're glad that you've joined us for worship. This is our 8 a.m. worship service, which is a little bit more traditional and includes our Lutheran liturgies. It will also include a time of Holy Communion. If you'd like to share in Holy Communion with us, we invite you to uh, take a quick moment and bring some bread and wine and juice um, to your worship area that uh, you might join us in sharing Jesus' body and blood as he gives us those gifts of grace. Now we'd like you to join us as we worship together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not yet exist. Amen. Amen. Please join us in a time of prayer and confession. If you were to keep watch over sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. join us as we pray together. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, 
that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinners on you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and the flesh came upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord. Then I open your, when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 11. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village, and her sister, Martha. 
Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through Je- though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going back there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had not had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring to merely sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard Jesus was coming, she went up and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise up again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and calling for you. And when she heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have saved this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, 
Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear, hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amazing images in our two lessons today. Dry bones scattered across the floor of a valley of death. Jesus' dear friend Lazarus, entombed four days and starting to stink. What striking images of death. Yet both stories are not so much about death as they are about God's amazing power to bring new life, resurrection life, out of death. Here we are just a couple days or a couple weeks before Easter. And these lessons kind of offer us a dress rehearsal of what lies ahead in Holy Week and Easter. If you and I are honest, especially here in our American culture, we really like hearing about the promise of new life, but we'd really rather avoid altogether talking about death. Part of this is our tendency toward denial. Consider all the euphemisms that we use for death in our culture. We don't say someone has died. More often than not, someone says they've gone to a better place, right? They've passed away. They've met their maker. Sometimes People will say, so-and-so is no longer with us. Truth is that, that we've tended to just avoid seeing death as a part of life, endings as a part of new beginnings. I can't help but, but also feel that when it comes to death or, or to the endings in our lives, to our struggles, how many of us are a lot like Ezekiel? When the Lord asks him, can these bones live? The bones that Ezekiel is looking out on in this, this image, the bones represent the exiled people of Israel that were living in Babylon. They were captives whose hopes of going home had long since dried up. Exile feels like death. Being forced to, to shelter at home, being forced to stop doing the ordinary things that we used to take for granted feels a lot like that disconnection. Now, of course, as Ezekiel is looking out on this image of dry bones, he knows dry bones can't possibly get up and dance. But remember, Ezekiel is speaking with God here. And when God says, can these bones live? You don't say to God, no. I like Ezekiel's response. Oh, Lord God, you know. Can they live? Well, God 
there's also a kind of irony in this conversation for it's saying, oh Lord God, you know, Ezekiel recognizes that the answer to life and death really does lie with God, not with Ezekiel, not with us. And we get an idea that God has a surprising answer in store for us, especially in these challenging days. I think all of us can admit we've experienced times when we doubt the power of God to change our circumstances. We often find ourselves with hope gone and dried up, feeling disconnected, like there's nothing for us to look forward to. We start to wonder, what if this or that changed? And I am not in these circumstances. When bad things happen so often, our desperate questions arise to the surface, crying out in the face of death and loss. They reveal our expectations. Why, God, have you let this happen to us? Why didn't I do this or that to save myself? In the midst of such questions, we find ourselves very much like Martha and Mary when they confront Jesus. If you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. Listen to the rebuke they bring to their friend, the regret in their cry of lament, their grief, their anger. Those are all the same emotions that we feel when we're overwhelmed, when we're facing situations over which we find we have little or no control. But notice Jesus' response. Jesus sees their tears and he weeps with them. Jesus knows their suffering. Jesus knows what pain and grief and loss they are experiencing. And Jesus is there with them. So often, I hear people when, when they read these lessons in Bible studies, wonder out loud, why did Jesus wait until Lazarus was dead before going to Bethany? The story itself gives us two reasons. First, it says so that what happens might bring glory to God and to Jesus. You know, any healer might have kept Lazarus from dying, right? But surely only God's self could raise someone who's been dead for four days. But the second reason the story offers us seems to be that so Jesus' followers and others who maybe still weren't sure about this Jesus, so that they might all believe. Certainly, this bringing life out of death would be convincing. Notice how both stories today, entire, I think, the whole Bible, in fact, points to us, points us to this God who is with us always, this God who's in the midst of our living, in the midst of our dying, in the midst of our, our struggles and disappointments, in the midst of our doubts, God continues to come to us today in surprising ways. 
Many of you may have heard of, of kids and adults who've been painting rocks and putting Bible verses or messages of hope or encouragement on those rocks and then leaving them on people's porches putting them places where people might see them just as they're looking down, a way of lifting up their perspective, their attitude. Just this morning, I, I heard of some teachers in a community that went around in the wee hours of this morning using chalk and wrote messages on the sidewalks or the driveways of some of their students' homes, letting them know that, that while they weren't in school, their, their teachers were looking forward to seeing them again, to connecting with them, letting those students know they hadn't been forgotten. Here in our community of faith, I found myself this morning praying with a dear friend of our congregation, his name is Dick. We prayed by phone and he is in the hospital, separated from his wife, separated from his family. We talked of God's presence, God's healing, God's faithfulness, and God's providing. You see, Dick had been very, very sick, in fact, close to death more than a handful of times about four years ago. Each day as I went to my car from his hospital room, I wondered, was that the last time I would see and talk with and pray with Dick? And yet, in the midst of those challenges, God breathed new life into Dick. And he recovered. And since then, he has seen these last four years as bonus time, as God's blessed time. As Dick and I prayed this morning, Dick shared how hard it was to be in the hospital and unable to have his family there to make decisions and talk with. But he said, Pastor, this morning, i got to tell you, God surprised me. As the doctor and I finished talking, the doctor walked toward the door to leave. And he turned back and asked, Could I touch you and pray with you right now? With tears in his voice, Dick said, in all his life, he never had a doctor who literally turned and stopped and came back and prayed with him. Isn't it amazing how God shows up in surprising ways? For Dick, God could not have been more present in that moment than God was with that doctor who prayed with him and was assigned to Dick of God's hope and healing, God's love and God's providing. The lessons today are stories about hope, about God's faithfulness, God's power to bring life out of the Good Friday moments in our lives. We will live. We will survive. God is breathing new life into our dry bones and, and speaking love and life into our hopeless moments. You see, God is still acting. God is still loving. God's promise is not that we won't walk through difficult days, but God's promise is that we won't do it alone, that God will be with us. And for all the difficulties that we face, God promises that death and evil will not be the last word, 
that if you and I are, are looking for it, even in the midst of death, God will have the last word. Life. New life. Resurrection hope. And a promise of eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen. reminded of our God, who is the Lord of all hopefulness. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with us in the prayers of God's people. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in. God, our sure strength, set the mind of your church on your spirit of love and kinship. Bring healing where there is division and hope where there is worry. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring life where there was despair and death. Bring healing and strength to all recovering from weather challenges and all who are dealing with or responding to the coronavirus pandemic. Bring new hope and new growth to barren lands and water 
to parched earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, our help is in you. Listen to the voices of the weak and the oppressed. Guard people in all lands from danger and injustice. Protect those serving in the medical field, in law enforcement, in the military. Keep the nations, governments, and people of the world from all evil. Empower leaders to work together and to seek your will above their own. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mary and Martha pleaded for healing. Hear the cries of your people who call out in need and in pain. Give us courage to advocate for those with no voice. Grant healing and comfort to those who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit. Hear us now as we pray for those we name silently or out loud right now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bring life to dry bones in our community, in our homes, in our empty workplaces, and Lord, the places of struggle and pain. Breathe your life-giving spirit into the corners of our churches and ministries that need renewal. By the leading of your spirit, help us trust God in the midst of what makes us anxious. Choose faith instead of fear and serve mission instead of our own comfort. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the faithful departed and for the assurance that we will join with them in the heavenly banquet in your holy presence. Comfort all who grieve and draw near to each one of us that we, we may know your faithfulness and your presence, not just beside us, but preparing the way ahead. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And to your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love through Christ our Lord. Amen. During these days where we're physically distant from one another, we invite you to take a moment now to share the peace of Christ with each other. What we usually do here as we gather and we invite you to do in your homes is to speak those words of peace to one another after we greet one another now. For those of you that may be online watching this through YouTube, I understand you can also send a message of peace or greeting through that chat option. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you, we respond to one another. As God gives God's self to us, we recognize that all that we have, all that we are, belongs to God. 
that we are entrusted with the gifts of time and talents, our finances, our skills, so that we might glorify God, that we might share what we have been given with the people around us, especially those in need. In our financial gifts to the church, we give back to God a portion of what God's entrusted to us, reminding us that that what we have is God's. And by giving back to God, sharing with others, we actually loosen our grip on all those things we so often begin to think we possess. I invite you now to take a moment to think of all the things for which you are grateful, things and people and circumstances that bless your life as we share in a prayer of offering with one another. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and prayers. In the night before Jesus went to the cross for you and me, Jesus gathered with his disciples, and there he took bread. He gave thanks. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. After he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this, all of you, in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's life, his death, and his resurrection until he comes again. Let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at Hope, we invite all who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We invite you to Join with us in sharing this holy meal where Jesus gives us himself in the bread and wine and juice of Holy Communion. We will first sing Lamb of God together, and then we will eat the bread and drink the wine or juice together as well. If you only have one of the elements that's perfectly fine. We believe that Jesus is fully present in just the bread or just the wine or just the juice. Please join in singing Lamb of God. As Jesus gives us, as Jesus gives himself to us through the sacrament of Holy Communion, we remind one another as we share the bread 
and wine or juice, saying, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May these gifts of Jesus' body and blood strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ in our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring. Bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen. shelter in faith. I like that phrase better than staying home or sheltering in place. It reminds us that this can be a time where we shelter with God, that our faith can grow, a time for us to catch our breath and reconnect with this God who loves us. On Hope's website, 
There are other worship videos posted there as well as hymns and songs that you could use to extend your worship time. We're also sharing links through our email blast to other resources and, and ways that, that you can continue to grow in faith. One such item is on our elca.org website, where you can type in Lenten Bible Study, 40 Days of Giving, for a wonderful five-week set of, of Bible lessons. Maybe you could do them in five days. They're all built to fit well with our Sunday appointed lessons. We want to be here for you, and we invite you to share this video, other worship resources with friends and family. And now, as God sends us out from our worship, maybe to uh, share breakfast or, or maybe to... Uh, to greet a neighbor by shouting a hello across the street. We're challenged to go in peace and share the good news. Remember the poor, heal the sick, and feed the hungry. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.